Elena Carisi was born in Rome on November 29, 1970. She was born into the spotlight, being that she came from famous parents. Her father, Albano, was an Italian singer who sold over 165 million records globally. Add that with being an actor and also a winemaker. Her mother, Romina Power, was an American singer who would later form a group with Elena's father, Albano. She also came from her famous grandfather, Tyrone Power, who was a famous actor who played in movies from the 1930s to the 1950s. It's no secret that Elena followed in her parents' footsteps and made a name for herself. She would often travel with her parents and sing on stage alongside them. Also, at just 24 years old, she became a household name in Europe due to her role on the Italian version of the American show, Will of Fortune. Her appearance on the show was so successful that they deemed her the Italian version of Will of Fortune's Vanna White. However, Elena was determined to be more than just a pretty face for television, following in her parents' footsteps. She inspired to be a novelist, so she enrolled in King's College in London and majored in literature. During her college dropout phase, she decided to go on a backpacking tour, exploring America in July of 1994. She ended up traveling the beautiful city of New Orleans and fell in love with it. Her mother Romina explained that she talked about it in her diary, how enthralled she was by one particular man. He was a man they called Alexander, and he was known around New Orleans for playing the trumpet. Her mother recalled in an Inside Edition interview that she told her she felt that her life was in danger, as if someone was trying to unalive her. Still, she went back a few days before New Year's Eve and called her parents to let them know that she was back in New Orleans, despite telling her mother her fears. This would be the last time that they would ever hear from their daughter. She checked in Liddell Hotel with Alexander, the man she had become enthralled with. The hotel manager recalled finding it odd that Elena was with this man, being he seemed to be 20 years her senior. She also recalled Elena appearing reserved and wearing dirty clothes that smelled. She would check in and out of the hotel at the same time every day. In the evening before or right after it got dark. She checked out of here January 6th, sometime between 12.30 and 1.30. That was the last confirmed sighting. But Alexander continued to stay in this room until the hotel manager became suspicious. Cindy Dale says he tried to cash some unsigned traveler's checks. I was told he was a street musician. Where is this man getting $50 and $100 bill um, traveler's checks? Dale says Alexander accused some of her staff members of stealing some of the traveler's checks, so she decided to kick him out January 14th. But she agreed to store some of his things. But it was the New Orleans Police Department that came calling for those things about two weeks later. So I took them down into our storage, and they opened the bags up, and sure enough, they, I, I recognized that they were clothes that she wore, and her books, and her pants. Days later, an eyewitness came forward and said he saw a woman matching Elena's description, behaving strangely, and then, all of a sudden, she jumped into the water. Started out, help! And she went down, help! She went down a third time, and that was the last we seen her. A lone young woman who was sitting here. And I was explaining to her that the park was closed and that she had to come on this side. The, the rails in the park, she couldn't sit out there. He never anticipated what would happen next. And she said, well, I belong in the water anyway, and just dove in. The stunned Cordova called the police and tried to coax the girl back into shore. That's what I was trying to holler at her. You got bad currents out there and undertows will suck you up. The girl soon realized that she was in danger. She was way out there, and you can hear it, you know? It Though Elena's mother still believes she's still alive, her father admitted in 2006 that he believed the security guard's story about her jumping into the Mississippi River. In January of 2013, her father Albino filed a request for an official declaration for the death of his daughter. By December 2014, she was officially declared deceased. She has never been seen of or heard of since January 6, 1994.